Hey, what's up everybody? Johannes here. Welcome back to the master classes. I'm absolutely overwhelmed by the wonderful response I got from you guys. So many comments, so many requests, what to do next. Uh, so much excitement, so much positivity in this time that is truly challenging for all of us. So I really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for um, taking part in this opportunity to create something together. That's absolutely meaningful for me and um, yeah I was really curious to see what you guys would go for. There is a lot of Dorjak, there is a lot of Shostakovich requests, there is a lot of Schumann requests, uh, some Prokofiev as well um, and we're gonna get to all of these I hope uh, in the course of this um, master course um, but first I thought it would be good to start with a day of basics um, namely double stops. Now I start every practicing day with double stops. I think they're a fantastic exercise for the left hand. They're like really like going to the gym uh, for the left hand because it strengthens your muscle. Um, it also strengthens your coordination and also enhances your understanding of structure. So we're gonna start today with thirds and uh, you will see that I'm not only playing thirds but I'm also adding a fourth here and there. So uh, let's just take C major because that's a good key to start the day with. And um, so I'm playing the, the first third and then I add the fourth. And I also add a fourth here. And that looks a little bit like this. Next, we're going to isolate the fourths. What is really important with doing all those exercises is that you keep a really flexible wrist. I don't want you to do this or this uh, just because you're running out of strength. I'd rather you take a little break whenever you feel like you don't have strength and then um, your, either your thumb um, is doing this. Remember, we're not supposed to do that. You remember that from yesterday from the Sans video. So we have to keep the joints round, um, but also we have to make sure, especially when we go to uh, the upper register, that we don't um, curve the wrist like this or like this. Whenever we have a locked joint, we limit flexibility, we limit blood flow. You know, if you've ever experienced that sort of tingling feeling in the fingers, that just means that the blood flow is interrupted somewhere. So it's either here at the locked joint or it's here if you pull your shoulder up. There's, there can be many reasons for that. Um, but yeah, tingling in the hands is always a sign that there is blockage somewhere and you need to check the chain um, of events, I would call it. Next, we're gonna go to fourths and that looks a little bit like this. Perfect. Now, of course, we cannot leave out fifths. Fifths are really important for us and, and to train what um, in French we call barre. Uh, I don't know what the term in English is. Um, I expect education from you guys in the comments below. Make sure that when you put the, make the fingers flat, that again, you don't, uh, um, you don't curve any joints to the point where they get absolutely white. That means uh, that there is no blood flow. So that's, that's dangerous. going to work on the sixth remember how in the thirds I added the fourth uh, on each side I'm going to do the same thing with the sixth here 
Um, now you might be wondering, what's the point of that? Um, imagine you're building a roof and um, right now I'm actually practicing under a roof. So I hope this is constructed well. Um, but if you have a roof, it's always a good idea um, to put an extra um, beam in between uh, these two parts of the roof so the roof doesn't collapse. And that's exactly what we do with practicing the extra fourth that we add in the thirds and the sixth because we add more stability to the hand. Once you've done you know, a whole scale with changing to the fourths uh, and maybe even to a tritone here and there, then you really feel your hand is having really good exercise. Now adding the fourth is clear here and you can also add a tritone. Yeah. So that's really up to you. We also don't want to forget sevenths. It's always good to practice the frame of the hand with thirds, but of course we have to take into consideration that with thirds you have to adjust your intonation because obviously the intonation of single notes is very different from intonation of um, double stops. So with a seventh, uh, as this is a pure interval, we don't have that problem. So we can actually practice these sevenths both small and big and that will give you a fantastic sense of a structure and of stability in the hand. Moving on to octaves, uh, we all need octaves, we all loathe octaves at times. I think it's also good to add structure to uh, practicing these octaves. So I'm, I'm going to do them in D major, um, going to start with the octave. Then like in the Sassans exercise from, from yesterday, I'm going to add uh, a fifth and then I'm going to add a fourth and another fourth. Oh, um, should be in tune. I really feel that I've engaged every finger in quite a lot of combinations. Um, if you're feeling adventurous, you could also add a tritone here and there. So let's see, let's see. Um, if I have an octave here, I could add a tritone. So that would already uh, be quite challenging. So maybe leave that for when you've already exhausted uh, practicing uh, the fifth and the fourth at the tritone, and then you're gonna have master level.
we shouldn't forget that we're going to use double stops in a musical context. So for octaves, I like to either take the octaves from the Rococo variations or the octaves from the first movement of the Dvorak concerto um, and really apply what uh, I've been working on in a musical context. A great passage for alternating sixths and thirds is the Walton Cello Concerto, um, for end of first movement and also end of third movement. Um, it's the same passage. Uh, I highly recommend not only that you look at this passage um, for your intervals, but also that you look at the Walton Concerto. Um, not many people play it and I really highly recommend it. Maybe I'll do a masterclass on Walton just because I feel this is something that I personally love very much. have a bonus indeed. This is going to be seconds. We're going to put the thumb um, on the A string and then we're going to put the third finger on the D string and it sounds a little bit like this. Now you might think um, other than really disturbing your neighbor you might never need this but in fact this is a very good exercise if you are working on artificial harmonics. A lot of people practice artificial harmonics with the octave. However, the problematic thing is that you are putting the weight between the two strings on the thumb um, on the D string, whereas later on you will need it on the A string. Subsequently, if you practice seconds, you will have the thumb in the right position. So there you have it. That was our bonus section of the day. I think we're going to keep that feature. That's a lot of fun. We're going to add a little secret um, sauce every day, a secret spice. I'm really interested to hear what your warm-up routine is. I know that's going to be interesting for all of us, but especially for me, because I'm always looking for ways to spice up um, this routine and to change things up. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. Also, if you have any wishes or requests for future masterclasses, leave them in the comments below. And again, thank you so much for being part of this community and I'll see you tomorrow for the next class. Bye.